Hey guys, how you doing? I'm going to record a quick lecture for you for the bone unit, uh, which will consist of chapter 7, osseous tissue, chapter 8, the skeleton, and chapter 9, articulations. Uh, it's a little loud inside the house, so I'm just out on the deck here. Uh, hopefully the you can hear me over the birds and stuff like that. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so to get started, let me maximize this. So to, uh, to get started, um, for, this, uh, for this chapter, um, we'll talk about how to divide up the skeleton into two different divisions. Um, the functions of the skeletal system, categories based on shape, a few features of long bones. We, there are uh, six, six different shapes of bones. So we'll, we'll look at the features of one of those shapes, the long bone, long bone shape. And, um, and uh, bone vasculature, how does blood uh, move through bone? Bone is very, very bloody, by the way. Um, <clears throat> uh, and then um, how bone grows width-wise, how does bone grow? And uh, finally, what's the difference between these epiphyseal plate and epiphyseal line. We've heard of, uh, we've heard of, um, you know, growth plates. You heard of gro growth, plate, growth plates. Well, that's the same thing, epiphyseal plate. Well, what's the difference between a plate and a line? Okay, so to, to, to divide up the skeleton into two divisions, there's the axial and the appendicular. Axial consists of the skull, I mean, just think of the axis. So you got the skull, the uh, vertebral column, but then you also have the ribs, and um, and you have the sacrum and, and coccyx, okay? So here, so you have the, the skull, the vertebral column, the ribs, and the... Uh, the ribs and the, the, the sacrum and, and the sacrum is five fused bones and then the coccyx which is like f roughly you know, four fused bones. And then you got the appendicular. Well, appendicular, it's, it's in the word, at the appendages, so your arms and your legs. And um, however, um, you just pay it, pay pay close attention uh, don't get confused between uh, when it comes to the clavicle the um, the clavicle the uh, the um, scapula and the hip bone because those both could um, uh, they could they could they could confuse you well the clavicle is appendicular the scapula is appendicular and the hip bone is appendicular so <clears throat> basically if it's attached to the if a bone is attached to the arm it's it's appendicular and if a bone is attached to the leg to the femur here it's appendicular so if it's if it's attached so that's how you can keep things straight because you know you, you know the clavicle you could get that you know confused because it's you know it's attached to the to the ribs here um, and it's just like the scapula just like the hip bone so let's do this again axial <clears throat> is is uh, consists of the skull you have your vertebral column <clears throat> you have your rib cage you have your sacrum, and you have your your coccyx. <clears throat> Everything else is appendicular. Arms, hands, legs, feet, ankles, wrists, as well as the clavicle, the scapula, and the hip bone, or you could say the, uh, the, the, pel the pelvis. Okay, <clears throat> so that's the difference. So that's how you can divide ab axial from appendicular. The functions of the bones. Well, number one, of course, is support. How can you, you know, what good is your muscles if you, uh, if you don't have something to pull on? 
<clears throat> so you got to have muscles and you got to have the bones to pull on the muscles. Uh, so support. <clears throat> Bone is what helps you keep yourself upright. It's not just your back muscles and your chest muscles or whatever. Um, but your, your, your skeleton as well. Storage of minerals is huge. Uh, calcium is the most abundant mineral. And it's not only... It's not only where calcium is, it's not just that calcium makes up the bone, but it's where our body goes to get calcium if we don't have enough calcium at any particular moment for the day or for the hour or for the minute. So when we're drinking, when we're consuming too little calcium in that particular moment, any minute of the day, uh, the body goes to the bone to 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 dig up the bone literally dig up the bone there there's these cells that we're going to get to they're called osteoclasts and they literally break up the bone the 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 bony matrix of your bone um to free up bone to free up the mineral in the bone which is which would be calcium and when you when you uh, are consuming enough or in abundance then you have another cell, osteoblasts, <clears throat> um, that will uh, actually deposit calcium into the bone, and that's what you want. So that's what you want. And those uh, cells you will will you'll also get to when it gets to, when we get to the endocrine system, and the two hormones that um, tell those two cells whether to dig up bone or to deposit. You know whether to. to to free up calcium or to deposit calcium. That's the endocrine system. <clears throat> the bone, uh, we also make uh, red blood cell, we also make red blood cells in the bone. And of course you get protection because you got your rib cage. Your rib cage protects your your vital organs like your heart, your liver, your, your <clears throat> even your kidneys a little bit, <clears throat> your lungs. And um, <clears throat> and then <clears throat> leverage. Uh, you got uh, you know a, a muscle will cross a joint and in order to uh, in order to to pull on bone and and uh, let you pick things up, move move any joint really. All right, <clears throat> six six uh, six categories based on shape. You got you got flat bones. <clears throat> Flat bones, for example. So what you need to know is that six, the, the, the six shapes, but you should also know some examples. So if I were to give you an example, of if I were to give you a, a, a bone, a name of a bone, you should be able to categorize that into one of the six shapes and vice versa. If I just said name a flat bone, you should be able to produce, give me a couple examples. Okay, so flat bones. Flat bones are flat. <clears throat> the cranial, the bones of of the skull, are flat bones. You, you say, well, well, no, it's a you, you know your skull is a big round thing. Well, yeah, but if you cut out, <clears throat> you know, you you cut out a, a piece, you'll find it's actually like a sheet of paper. Your ribs are flat. It's why you can do chest compressions because your ribs are flat. Yeah, they're kind of long, but they're they're they flex. They can act. You, they actually can give uh, the sternum. Anything that has to do with the ribs. So, because your sternum is is attached to your ribs, uh, the clavicle is right there, right on the rib cage. So, your clavicle, your sternum, the manubrium, all that stuff, xiphoid process, your your ribs. Those are all flat, flat, flat. And the scapula on the back side. The scapula is also considered flat, a flat bone. Those are your flat bones. Don't get scapula confused. You know, the shape looks... I mean, it, the scapula... Sometimes... Sometimes it gets... Um, sometimes the scapula can get... You know, people can get confused between scapula and the hip bone. Well, the hip bone is an irregular bone. It has a big hole in the middle of it. We're going to... We put scapula under flat bones. We put the, the, the hip bone... I say that right? We put the scapula under flat, the hip bone or the or the the pelvis we put under irregular. 
Okay, <clears throat> the next one is a sutural bone. Your skull, your skull has, your skull has, um, is, is, it is made up of several large bones, the cranium, and uh, they're connected by these, by sutures, that where they, where they meet, they, where a, one bone meets and another bone meets, it forms a little crack. <clears throat> it looks like a little crack. Well, it looks like a suture like that and if you have another let's say this is the back of the the skull here and it looks like this so here's the the back of the you know if you look at the back of a it would look like this well sometimes what would happen so here you know here you'd have your parietal bone and you got a parietal bone and you got your occipital bone you got three bones and you got three sutures right here well sometimes what happens is a suture won't close exactly right you know in the middle there and it'll form an extra it'll kind of do that and therefore you end up instead of having three bones here now well now you got four well this fourth one here because it's not really you wouldn't call it like like the parietal bone or the occipital it's like this little little fragment well what do you call it you call it a sutural bone because uh, it, it's 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 found within the suture and actually these bones these sutural bones are the reason why anatomists don't see, can't seem to agree on the number of bones that we have in our body because we have these humans have these little extra ones here and there throughout the skull sutural bones so you have how many how many bones do you have nobody can nobody can agree is it 203 204 205 206 it's because of these sutural bones all right <clears throat> Maybe maybe long bones are the easiest. Your long bones. You got your you got your ulna. You got your uh, you got your radius. You got your humerus. You got your your femur. Your tibia. Those are long bones. However, all these little guys, all the phalanges, your metacarpals, your <clears throat> your phalanges, these are also considered long bones. Even this little dude right here is a long bone long bone long bone how do you figure <clears throat> because a long bone is longer than it is wide so even this little digit right there is considered a long bone okay <clears throat> so all your phalanges on your hand and your foot are are all long bones um and th those are long bones now now, now, now you say, well, a rib is kind of long. What's the what's? More, give me another difference. Well, long bones are, um, they're design. They can take weight because they're cylindrical. Okay, guys, they're 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 like a pipe. You can't take a pipe, a metal pipe anyway, and and bend it. It's 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 a it's 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 cylindrical. You can't. It won't flex. But a rib, because it's flat, it can flex. You can bend a rib. Okay? So, uh, that's, you know, you can stand on your hands. If you, if you tried, you can stand on your fingertips, can't you? You can stand on your toes. Those are all, you got tiny little pipes, you know, for fingers. All right, so we got flat bones, sutural bones, long bones. We also have irregular bones. <clears throat> We don't have a lot of these, but we have a few. Uh, the vertebrae, the bones of your vertebral column, are all um, irregular. Irregular bones are like the ones that really don't fit in any other shape, any other category. Your vertebrae are irregular. They're not flat. They're not long. They're not short. <clears throat> the hip bones, your two hip bones, are irregular, and your facial bones. So you got the you got the skull, but you have the you, you have your facial bones, and then you have your your cranial bones. So the cranial bones are these guys here: frontal, parietal, your temporal, occipital. Those are cranial. But then your facial are right here. Your facial are irregular, very very irregular. But the cranial bones are. Can you, can you guys remember? Cranial cranial bones are flat bones 
All right. We got sesamoid. Sesamoid because they're like uh, they're like they they look like a sesame seed. We have um, we have four. We definitely have four of them. This little bone right here, the one that kind of gets sore, that's your, that's this is the the pisiform, uh, one of the wrist bones. That's a sesame seed bone, sesamoid, sesamoid. And then your two kneecaps, your two patellas, are uh, are also sesamoid bones. So there, so we have four for sure. Okay. Um, and then we have some that you know the, the, that'll develop within like a you know tendons stuff like that. But one, two, three, four. <clears throat> um, sesamoid. And then finally, we have the short bones, small boxy. That's our eight wrist bones, eight wrist bones, and your your ankle bones and your ankle bones. So your ankle bones, ankle bones, wrist bones, wrist bones. These are your carpals and your tarsals. Remember, you drive a car, but you walk on tar. Carpals, tarsals. Okay, excellent job, guys. Um, all right, let's do a little bit of uh, skipping here. Okay, we're just going to kind of skip forward. Skip forward. These words are all important, and knowing what these words mean are important. This is all, you know, lab stuff, but we're going to skip this for the moment. Uh, the features of a long bone. You got your... Uh, you got your... The main, like, the main... You know length of the bone this is called your diaphysis <clears throat> like the shaft <clears throat> excuse me and you have your the expanded end this is called your epiphysis and then in the middle between the two is your well what's the word for what's the latin word for middle <clears throat> meta metaphysis so you have your diaphysis your epiphysis and your metaphysis <coughs> if you notice in a long bone most of the long bone is at least the shell is compact compact bone compact bone compact bone the diaphysis is all compact bone but in the epiphysis i see spongy bone it looks like a sponge. It's not soft at all. These are plates. These are little plates called trabecula, trabeculi, trabecular bone. It looks like spongy bone. It looks spongy, so we say this is spongy, surrounded by compact, but um, it's not spongy at all. <clears throat> anyway, this uh, increases uh, the blood's ability to get get to all your bone cells and keep your bones alive okay <clears throat> moving right along uh we are already halfway through this chapter bone vasculature bones are very very bloody <clears throat> a, a very uh um prominent network of, of vessels throughout the the bone <coughs> and um, <coughs> and uh, and even if when, when you dissect a, a long bone you'll find these like these units called called osteons these units here is a unit here and a unit here and in the middle you have a central canal <clears throat> where blood will move vertically. <clears throat> the long bone on the outside of the long bone, on the, on the ends, you have articular cartilage. Specifically, the name is, it's, 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 um, uh, what kind specifically? It's hyaline. Hyaline, high, high, high. Hyaline cartilage. 
uh, the cartilage at the end of your long bones. You know, the stuff you chew off at, at B-dubs, you know, when you're eating your wings or whatever, and you, you want to chew on that cartilage or whatever. It's articular cartilage. The, the exact name, the actual name of the articular cartilage, it's, it's called um, hyaline cartilage. But that hyaline cartilage doesn't go all the way around the whole bone. It just at the ends, the rest of the bone is lined with uh, is lined with periosteum. Peri means to go around. Osteum bone, periosteum. Okay, <clears throat> excellent, guys. All right, we have four bone cells. We have osteocytes. We got osteoblasts. We got osteoprogenitor cells, and we have osteoclasts. Osteocytes are the adults, okay? They're the mature bone cells. They, um, the, main, the main word, if you want to associate, if you have one word that you want to associate with osteocyte, it's to, it's maintain. Osteocytes basically maintain bone integrity. They're not very, very, very active, <clears throat> like laying down new bony matrix, like when you're growing, like like when you're, you know, 10 years old and you're growing. But these are the ones that you'd find as, as an adult. They're, it's still living, it's maintaining, it's still, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, you know, rebuilding matrix, dissolving matrix, that, that kind of thing. But it's not like, re it's not, it wouldn't be like a teenager where it's real muscular and just, you know, it's just a kind of a chilled out, a grown up cell. Okay. Where do you find these bones? Where do you find these osteocytes? Well, throughout the whole bone. If if we, were, if we were to draw out, you know, a cross-section of a bone, and you got these, uh, we were, we, uh, you got these osteons that we were talking about, um, <clears throat> you, you would find these osteocytes throughout the bone. Here, here, here. However, osteoblasts are the, the teenager. These guys... These guys are actively laying down new bony matrix, and the way they do that is you find them, <clears throat> you find them uh, making an osteon, and when when they when they lay down a new bony matrix, they lay down. There's one right there, and here's here's some more here. They lay down another ring. And they become trapped. They become trapped. Remember, bone is... They become trapped. When, once they become trapped and they're no longer laying down, the osteoblast becomes, differentiates into the osteocyte. So an osteoblast, once it's done laying down, it's trapped itself inside of that, that layer, it becomes an osteocyte. Um, you find you find these uh, osteoblasts in the same place where you'd find osteo um, throughout throughout the you know throughout the bone because well they're 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 the cells that make um, that make the uh, that make bone that lay down new bony matrix. Osteoprogenitor cells are is the stem cell that differentiates into osteoblasts, which differentiate into osteocytes. Okay, so... <laughs> All right, I'm writing with my, the, the pad thing here. So osteoprogenitor cells differentiate are the stem cells that differentiate into osteoblasts. Osteoblasts, and as as a as a kid, you have a lot of these. You still got a lot of these just hanging around. 
uh, because they're they're involved in fractures. You you get you break your bones. You heal just like that, right? As a kid, and as a as a grown up, it takes forever, right? It takes forever to heal anything. You you don't 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 fall and break your hip. Don't right because because we lose these. We use these up as we age, and it, and and so. Uh, we we it's 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 one of the reasons why we why we age it's because we use up our all of our stem cells not just bone stem cells but muscle stem cells uh, uh, you know and so on so osteoprogenitor cells differentiate into osteoblasts osteoblasts differentiate into osteocytes where do you find osteoprogenitor in the inner lining of the periosteum Let's say here's your here's your bone, okay? Here's your bone here. And here is your here's the medulla, here's the medullary cavity, and this is the the periosteum here. So you'll find them here. You'll find them in the end dot. Here's the periosteum. Here's the medulla. Well, the medulla is lined with another type of another type of uh, lining called the endosteum. So you find them in the periosteum. You find them in the endosteum. Um, and, uh, and these guys will, that's their job is to, once, once there is a need, they will differentiate in osteoblasts. Osteoblasts will do their thing, lay down new bony matrix, and then once they've trapped themselves, they become osteocytes. Osteocytes. Osteoblasts. Osteoprogenitor cells. And finally, we have osteoclasts. Osteoclasts break up bone. Break up bone. Well, that doesn't sound good. Well, is, is these acids, proteolytic enzymes, to break up bone to break up that calcium. Um, <clears throat> when you don't drink enough, when you, I always say, when you don't drink enough milk, when you don't take in enough calcium, whether that's from broccoli or, or cheese or, or whatever, okay? Um, where, where do you find uh, osteoclasts? Well, you f you find them in the um, you find them throughout, but uh, you also will find them in the endosteum, especially in the endosteum. Here, those are the osteoclasts. Okay, so so in other words, osteo like osteoblast and osteoclast are they kind of they're kind of doing the opposite things. Osteoblasts, which we were introduced to first, I mean before the osteoclast, osteoblasts lay down new bony matrix. Osteoclasts break up bony matrix. Osteoblasts lay down calcium. Osteoclasts free up calcium, dump it into the blood so that all of our cells can live. Calcium is used for for bone. Calcium is used for muscle contraction. Calcium is used for nerve propagation. Calcium is used for for the endocrine system. Um, every system in the body I can think of, uh, calcium is, is, is important. Which kind of makes sense then why it's 98% of our bone is calcium. Alright, very good guys. Um, let's move forward here, move forward. The, uh, the, the trabeculae that I mentioned, that we mentioned before, you know, the spongy bone, spongy bone, you notice that they sort of form in, like, in lines, and the actually the direction of, of stress. And so... It's the reason why bones will tend to snap one way, but not the other way. Um, we can also, in forensics, we can also tell 
you know, a male from a female, you know, when you when you dig up a bone, or when you, when you find a bone, um, male from female, how much they weighed, uh, their gait, you know, how they walked, um, how they, uh, what sports they played based on, you know, if you cut a bone down the, down the, down the, the length, you can actually determine those things based on, on tri trabeculae, um, how it's been laid down in the bone. All right, we have appositional, we have appositional growth. Appositional, let's, let's, uh, let's see here. <clears throat> this says, um, osteoprogenitor to cell differentiated to osteoblast. Um, appositional growth. When you're the the diameter, it's this, this wide, for example. However, as as that the medulla grew let's take a look at the thickness of the actual bone your actual bone is this thick as a baby as an adult it got thicker but what i want to point out is that your your overall bone would have been much 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 thicker if if the medulla stayed the same diameter you understand what i'm saying guys you see if this stayed the same from here to here to into adulthood look at how thick your bone would have been it would from here to here that would have been you you wouldn't be able to move or you'd, you'd have to like use your arms to like move your legs back and forth What is happening? Well, osteoclastium eating away and growing the medullary cavity. It's actually eating away, and that way your actual thickness of your bone doesn't get as thick as it normally would. Still, it is thicker, but it's not as thick as if it weren't doing that. So that's what, I, well, that's what I wanted to point out to you guys. Yes, the thickness of your bone grows, increases, but so the cavity. Those crows are so annoying. <laughs> All right. Doing good, doing good, doing good. Let's kind of move forward. Uh, all right <clears throat> one of the last points i want to make is so that was appositional growth how the bone grows um how the bone grows in width okay guys we have endochondral ossification endochondral ossification cartilage to bone when we're born but when we're an embryo and as as we grow we start our bone is is cartilage. Our bone is actually cartilage. Man, sorry guys. It's and what happens is, um, the inside of your bone starts begins to. Uh, be converted into bone and more as you as you as you age all the way up until 13 14 and even up in cells forming eventually what you see cartilage ring of cartilage ends up being 
that let's see here let's go forward that ring all right i'm gonna draw this out because it's you can't really see i'm gonna redraw the here's the end of your bone here ends up being cartilage articular cartilage just on the outside like that and but you still have a growth plate see how this see how we right here and here goes away and now you just have some hyaline cartilage here some hyaline cartilage here as that's that's called endo that's basically i just want you to understand how how what 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 our cells are made out of what our bone is made out of as infants and into adulthood and where where does that we start with cartilage and we end with a bone however there's a little bit of cartilage left as long as this growth plate right here is cartilage you are growing in length you are getting taller and it's called an epiphyseal plate epiphyseal plate okay your those cells are being convert are are are, are is the place actually where the bone actually grows 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 in length eventually those cells go away and what you have left over once you're you know depends on if you're you're white or black or or, or asian Eventually, european descent uh you know you have caucasoid mongoloid negroid eventually line epiphyseal line is bone epiphyseal plate here is is cartilage okay guys if it's if you're growing you have epiphyseal plate if you have epiphy epiphyseal plate it's cartilage once it's gone it's there's just a remnant all you just see left is this line where where a plate used to be what is a epiphyseal line made out of it's just bone you still have your articular cartilage on the outside because you got to have <laughs> you have your joint okay and that's called endochondral ossification i think we have just one last point that i want to make oh no that was it that 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 was all for um that was all for for this chapter Um, <clears throat> now moving on to moving on to the next chapter this chapter there are 182 slides you're you're not going to be responsible for all 182 if we as we start scrolling down here's slide four my my laptop is freezing freezing up but um as we go we will see um slide number seven slide seven uh i want you to i want you to um Yeah, we can keep going. Yeah, slide eight. Again, know that there's a difference between cranial bones and facial bones and the shape. And in lab, you'll be responsible for knowing the names of all the bones. This particular chap, this particular handout is actually, it's like a lab manual because it actually gives you all the names of all the bones and it goes through everything. What I've done for you is I've given you a thumbs up for the for the uh for the slides that 
uh, that you'll be responsible for. And um, and if you don't see a thumbs up in the bottom right, uh, then then you don't have to worry about it. Okay. <clears throat> so on this particular slide, um, uh, you know, again, there is a difference between facial bones and and cranial bones. Um, this is just I, I just thumbs this up for you just because it's an it's you know it's a nice photo it's a nice draw a nice uh, diagram for you know memorizing the names of the bones for lab um so let's keep going here we'll keep going computer's kind of freezing up so maybe what I'll do is I'll I'll start another video I'll let this thing process and I'll start another video starting with this chapter all right thank you guys very much and we will see you next time